Coming up, enemy at the gates. Everybody out. Democracy itself under siege. Domestic terrorists had already made it to the third level. Now see the ray of light. People helping people. On our capital's darkest day. No weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. Incitement of insurrection. That's the charge House Democrats delivered to the Senate last night as their single article of impeachment. The next step will be a trial in the Senate. A growing number of Republicans oppose the trial. Why are they claiming it's unconstitutional? Well, Jenna Browder brings us the story from Washington. For the first time in its 232-year history, the Senate is putting a former president on trial for impeachment charges. And no one is quite sure how it'll turn out. Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States. Democrats are expected to focus their case on what members of Congress lived through on January 6th, the storming of the U.S. Capitol that turned deadly. They'll point to the president's words at the rally right before the riot and his repeated claims about a stolen election in the weeks leading up to it. If you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Since then, Democrats say the case against Trump has only strengthened. He has not demonstrated remorse. He has not even acknowledged his role in the events of January 6th. And he has never disavowed the lies that were fed to the American people by him about who actually won the election. The article charges Trump's offenses extend beyond his words at that rally. It also accuses him of trying to subvert and obstruct the results of the election by pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. Democrats claim he gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government. He threatened the integrity of the democratic system. Chief Justice John Roberts won't preside over the trial because Trump is no longer president. Instead, Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy will do it. And because Trump is no longer in the White House, many Republican senators argue that a trial is unconstitutional since he isn't the sitting president and can't be removed from office. Some, like Senator Marco Rubio, also say a trial will only further the divide in the country. We already have a flaming fire in this country, and it's like taking a bunch of gasoline and pouring it on top of the fire. In his first statement since leaving the White House, Trump announced the opening of the office of the former president, responsible for managing President Trump's correspondence, public statements, and appearances. The big question now, will he be convicted? Democrats need 17 Republican senators to go along with them. Senator Mitt Romney was the only Republican to vote to convict Trump on the article of impeachment last year and seems open this time. Incitement to insurrection uh, is, uh, is an impeachable offense. If, if not, what is? But few people here in Washington think it's likely enough Republicans will go against the former president for Democrats to win their case. And President Biden is one of them, telling CNN he doesn't think 17 Republicans will vote to convict Trump. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Well, I'm really surprised that Patrick Leahy is going to supervise the trial. It's going to be very hard for there to be a perception that this is impartial and any rulings he makes, uh, you know, he's a Democrat. And so you have to recognize the partisanship here. Um, uh, Supreme Court justice should have been brought in, and uh, I'm really surprised that that's not happening. Uh, at the same time, uh, the current president, Joe Biden, has already predicted the outcome. He says there's not enough votes, and so we're going to go through yet another show trial, yet more political theater, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, President Trump will be acquitted. In other news, another variation of the coronavirus has now appeared in the U.S. This one is coming from Brazil. It was found in a patient in Minnesota who recently traveled there. Other mutations have already been reported in the United Kingdom and in South Africa. And our CBN News medical reporter, Lori Johnson, is now here with us to discuss this. And Lori, tell us about these mutations. I'm hearing that they're far more infectious.
Absolutely, they are. And it's very concerning to health officials, Gordon, because the UK variant, the one from, the, from Britain, has already been detected in about half of the states in the U.S. And it's expected to be the most dominant variant by March. And this one is at the very least 30% more transmissible. So 30% more contagious. So folks have that much more of a risk. It's so much easier to get than the strain that we've been dealing with up until for the last year or so. And then we've got these other two strains. The one from Brazil has been detected in only one state. And then the South African variant, very serious, hasn't been detected at all. There is a travel ban from South Africa. We need to hope and pray that it doesn't make its way to the U.S. Well, uh, tell us, is, from the early indication, are these variants more deadly? That's a great question. And so the UK variant up until now has has not seemed to be more deadly, but there are some new reports out of the UK that it might be. So further study needs to be done. The real concern is that South, that South African variant, because we know that the vaccines do not work as well on that South African variant. They still work, but only about 70 to 85 percent. And as you know, Gordon, we've been hearing these wonderful 95% efficacy rates, that's not the case with this South African variant. Well, should, should the government literally shut our borders and, and say no one travels? Uh, is, is that the solution? Well, that is what's happening right now. So there are travel bans in place from places like Brazil, South Africa, the UK, and many other European nations. Uh, so that is something that's happening, and it is expected to slow it down. Will it be enough? Because these variants are so contagious, we'll have to wait and see. So it's literally a race from the vaccines to the variants. Can people get vaccinated in time and slow the spread of these variants? Because remember, mutations only happen when the when the disease spreads well it, it, they the more the virus is reproducing that's what leads to the more vari variation that gives them more opportunity to so uh, I guess this underlines the need to vaccinate our, our you, know, you know back to the travel ban uh, it's it's one thing to ban travel from a particular country but what if someone from South Africa say goes to Sweden um, and then travels to the United States, uh, it, don't we need a total travel ban just to be absolutely sure we're not bringing the variant here? Absolutely. And this is the conversation we had about 10 months ago with China. We had the travel ban from China, but what if someone from China goes to another place and then comes here? The good news is all international travel is being monitored and people cannot enter the United States without a negative COVID test. The problem, Gordon, is some people are falsifying those tests. So there, there is an absolute monitoring system in place, but is it foolproof? No. Well, let me ask you one more disturbing question, and that is, um, given the mutation, and given that the virus has already proven it mutates quite quickly, is that going to cause the government to make vaccination mandatory? There's no talk about that right now, Gordon, but what the government is doing is partnering with some of these vaccine companies like Moderna to make a, a new vaccine that is resistant to this variant. So Moderna is already in phase one clinical trials for this new booster shot that might be more effective. And so this is what we see with mutations every year, for example, with the flu vaccine, where you can sort of tweak the vaccine to adjust to the new variants. Of course, you know, we talk about phase one trials than phase two clinical trials. Moderna has already said they're not going to do phase three trials. It takes too long and involves too many thousands of people. So that this new booster that is uh, aimed at fighting the South African variant is only going to go through two phases of trials. All right. Well, Lori, thanks for being with us. And uh, if you want to stay up to date and, and get Lori's latest uh, on the virus and on these mutations, all you have to do is download the CBN News app. Well, tens of thousands fled their homes and 39 people lost their lives. One year ago this month, the devastating Taal volcano erupted in the Philippines. Shortly after, the pandemic hit, hindering recovery efforts. Fishermen were among those hit the hardest. 
So who helped them rebuild their lives? Lucille Toulousan explains. This is the Ta'al Volcano Island after the eruption. What used to be a famous tourist spot and home to some 6,000 families is now a no-man's land because it's been declared a permanent danger zone. Former resident Sherwin Pusa recounts how frightening it was when the earth began to shake. I was feeding fish on the lake when all of a sudden, I saw smoke rising from the crater. I can hear the rumbling of the ground while there was an earthquake. That's when me and my wife, who was then five months pregnant, fled the island. Losing their home, Sherwin and his wife had to move to the city and stay with relatives. He found a job as a factory worker, but then after the pandemic hit, he was among those laid off. As a Christian, Sherwin surrendered their situation to God. After his wife gave birth, Sherwin brought his family back to their hometown. If you really trust in God, you will have confidence in His perfect will. We went back to our hometown because I believe that whatever was lost, God will replace them. Sherwin's pastor, Javier Sante, shares the same sentiment. Despite losing his house and their church building in the eruption, he continued to trust and serve God. The body of Christ and His everlasting Word will never be destroyed. I believe He is a miraculous God, and I will forever trust in Him. He uses many people to help those in need. God has honored the faith of Sherwin and Pastor Javier. Operation Blessing took advantage of Pastor Javier's boat-making skills to provide boats as part of the rehabilitation and livelihood program for survivors of the Ta'al eruption. Exactly one year ago today was when Ta'al volcano erupted. And Operation Blessing is back here giving livelihood to our fishermen. This is the first batch of nine fishing boats that we are giving to them. First of all, I thank the Lord, and I also thank all the people whom He used to help us. I thank Operation Blessing for your unending support. I pray the Lord will continuously bless you with good health so you can help more Filipinos in need. Operation Blessing is here. Uh, we are commanded by the Lord to help those who are in need. And so as long as, as they need help, we will stand by them until they get back on their feet. Lucille Telusan, CBN News, Batangas, Philippines. It was such a beautiful area. 25 years ago, I was on the rim of that volcano praying about the Asian Center for Missions, and God, God heard that prayer, and He answered that prayer. Uh, it, but it's absolutely devastating what that eruption has done. And we're there in your name. If you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of that relief mission. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us and join in everything we're doing around the world. If you want to see people helped around the world, join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing. How much is it? Well, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. And you're joining with tens of thousands of people who want to make a difference in the world, who want to see people given hope and a future, and you're part of all of it when you join the 700 Club. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, up next, praying under siege. What went on behind closed doors when the Capitol was under assault? Those who were hunkered down for three hours speak up. Plus, a neglected wife and a husband with a demanding mistress. What was the text that blew the lid off their marriage? Well, stay tuned to find out. Your news channel, your shows, the stories you care about. Anytime you want, anywhere you want. Download the CBN News app today. Do you have questions about God? Call us. It's toll free. 1-800-700-7000 or check out this link. Tomorrow, is Christianity being silenced? The hammer is going to come down on conservatives and traditional Christians. Big tech is beginning a crackdown. This has been a dry run, if you will, for, uh, for greater control. And cancel culture roams free. 
Maybe it will affect your employment. What is the next step for the church? We have to get our networks in place to prepare for persecution. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. January 6, 2021, the world was stunned as a mob ransacked the United States Capitol. What have happened and what about the people who were trapped inside? For three hours, many feared for their lives. And what did they do? Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson brings us the inside story. January 6 started off like most any other Wednesday for Senate Chaplain Barry Black. First came hosting the bipartisan Senate prayer breakfast, followed by opening the Senate in prayer. But on his way back to his office, Black heard alarms and then a Capitol Police officer banging on his door. There was a pleasingly imposing Capitol Police uh, who basically said, I've come to get you, I'm not leaving you behind, follow me. As I followed him, I could already see that domestic terrorists had already made it to the third level. Chaplain Black joined a group of senators in a secure location, hunkering down for about three hours. I was grateful for the opportunity for ministries because there in our secure location, I had an opportunity to talk with people, to have long conversations. I mean, three hours is a long time mm -hmm. to pray with people individually. Eventually, Black was asked to pray over the entire group. This was an extemporaneous prayer, uh, which basically uh, said, Lord, we have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget how you have led us in the past. Lord, we're grateful for exceedingly great and precious promises. No weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. Meanwhile, on the House side, officers stood between rioters and the House chamber, while lawmakers, aides, and members of the media scrambled for cover. They broke the glass. Everybody stay down. Crouched down on the House balcony, trying to evacuate, but unsure where was safe to go, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester started to pray. Five people lost their lives at the Capitol that day, including U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, while miraculously, all lawmakers and staff members stayed safe. As you look back and reflect on that day, were there any moments where you saw God at work in the chaos or any miracles that you might have witnessed? I, I, I think a better question would be, were there any moments when I did not see God at work? It was amazing. Uh, I saw people helping people. I saw people who uh, themselves should have been afraid and paralyzed by fear, encouraging one another. Black was impressed by how lawmakers finished the work they set out to do that day after the Capitol was cleared. The votes for president of the United States are as follows. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Running on adrenaline, he closed the historic uh, joint democracy. session in prayer around 4 a.m. These tragedies have reminded us that words matter and that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Black strongly believes God will use the infamous attack for his glory. We will be able to say it was January the 6th that I began to take the incremental steps that brought greater unity, but even more importantly, 
greater righteousness to our nation and world. Chaplain Black tells me despite everything going on in our country, he remains hopeful because no matter what happens, God is with us always. Reporting from Washington, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Well, I shudder to think what would have happened if that mob had been able to break into the House of Representatives with sitting U.S. representatives uh, right there in that hall. What would have happened to them? What would have happened to staff members who were behind barricaded doors if those doors had broken? Uh, there could have been an awful bloodbath. Uh, we, we lost lives that day. But you look at the death toll, what could have happened, and you go, thank God it didn't. And thank God there were people who were believing in prayer for this to stop, for this to not come to that kind of bloody conclusion. We need to pray for America today. Uh, if you don't think we're divided, I don't, I don't know where you're living because we're clearly divided. And clearly on a partisan level that I've never seen in my life. And you can't even think about compromise. You can't even think about reaching across the aisle. Uh, and if you ever do, then you can pretty much guarantee you're going to face a primary challenge. You know, we're, we're, we're so divided, we can't even see the other side. In that, we can see God, and we can seek Him with all of our heart. And when we do that, we will find Him. That's his wonderful promise in the book of Jeremiah. So let's do that. Let's humble ourselves. Let's pray. If there's anything in your life that is wrong, that is not pleasing to God, not pleasing to you, please turn from it. Let's, let's repent of our wicked ways. Turn to him. Ask him to heal our land. When we do, he will answer from heaven and he will do what he has already promised to do. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you as a divided nation. We come to you so embroiled in our own partisanship that we can't see. And we've disobeyed your commandment to love one another. So, Lord, we turn from that and we turn to you. And we ask that you would heal our land. We ask that you would come down and be the Prince of Peace, that you would bring peace to Washington, D.C., that you would bring peace to every one of our state capitals, that you would br bring peace to our city council, to our neighborhoods. Without you, we can't do this, but with you, we can do all things. So we pray for America, and we ask for peace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're calling people to pray and to pray every day. And if you want to be part of the Pray for America campaign, all you have to do is go to PrayForAmerica.com or you can text PRAY to 71777. Let your voice be heard in heaven and join with us in praying for America. Terry? Well, up next, $80,000 in debt and on the brink of bankruptcy, this scientist and her husband were at odds about how to dig out of that debt. She demanded proof. So how did she get it? See for yourself, that's coming up. Plus, hit by two hurricanes in less than two months, collapsed ceilings buried everything this woman owned. How did she dig out of the rubble? She's going to tell you herself right after this. Do you want to know more about having a relationship with God? Call us at 1-800-700-7000. in debt. Stephanie and Alan Bortnick say they felt like slaves to the bank. Alan came up with a plan to pay off the debt, but Stephanie wasn't convinced. As a scientist, she needed proof that the plan would work. So how did she get it? Take a look. Like many millennials, Stephanie and Alan Bordnick were in student loan debt. They were already up to $40,000 when Alan, an electrical designer, lost his job in a layoff. 
I was still in school. We were still struggling to pay off the debt that we had accumulated while he had lost his job. Um, so it was, it was a hard time. Alan took out a bank line of credit for basic living expenses and to keep up with Stephanie's continuing educational costs in genetic research. It definitely felt discouraging, and we felt like a, a slave to the bank, really, have this debt that I just can't seem to get under control. After six months of unemployment, Alan switched careers, hoping to create better long-term security and pay but he took a 50% pay cut as an apprentice electrician. Alan searched the Bible for answers about money troubles, and he came away convinced they needed to tithe. Oh, my attitude was definitely, I didn't think we should be tithing. It was hard for me to grasp this idea of giving away what it felt like we didn't have. They negotiated a compromise of giving 5% of their income. But it still, it didn't make sense to me. After Stephanie graduated, they moved to a metro area that had the best job opportunities for genetic researchers. They paid basic living expenses on their line of credit. I could not find work. We got into an, a significant amount of debt at that point. Eventually, Alan found a job while Stephanie worked part-time in a coffee shop. Finally, after nine months, she was hired in a great research position. But three months later, she was laid off when 10% of the workforce was slashed. It was terrifying. It was, it just made you question it was very hard to stay focused in that time and just say, okay, God, I know you have a plan. We are waiting patiently, but hurry it up a little bit. Their debt increased until Stephanie landed her dream job in genetic research. Alan's pay also increased as a journeyman electrician. But by then, their debt had swelled to $80,000. They could barely meet their monthly bills. That's when their bank suggested they consider bankruptcy. We were told from a bank uh, when we went to talk to them, that you don't come back from this kind of debt. Instead, Alan saw this as an opportunity to reintroduce the idea of tithing. I think that's what God wanted us to do, is to take that step forward when we couldn't see what was in front of us. She wanted to prove that we still can't afford to do 10%. I'm a scientist. I need to do experiments. I have a hypothesis. I test it. I have to see a concrete answer. That's when Stephanie said she tested God every month about tithing. And I think that's when things started to really turn. Somehow money would show up. We would get a random check from the government because of, there was a tax mistake, or Alan would be offered a small side job. So God always meets us where we need to be met. He showed me every month when I added up that total that there was a little tiny bit of green. It was incredible. I just kept saying to Alan, I was like, this does not make sense. This is too many coincidences for it to say this wasn't a God incidence. So instead of defaulting on their student loans and declaring bankruptcy on the rest of what they owed, within six years, the Bortniks paid off their $80,000 debt in full. I feel like Stephanie's heart has changed with giving now because, you know, it's often her idea to give now, not mine. We would not be out of debt if we didn't tithe. I'm incredibly thankful to be able to pass that on to my sons now. It doesn't feel like a challenge, it feels like a thank you. God, thank you, here's the first 10%, not the last. I love Stephanie's honesty. She had to test God. She had to say, I'm a scientist, I need to have proof here. And it's wonderful, you can test God in this. And he says, prove me now and I will open the windows of heaven. Here's the promise, it's from Malachi chapter three. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. For Alan and Stephanie, they read the, the, the scripture, they believed the scripture. Stephanie had to test it to believe it, but that test, God will stand the test, and it's the only time we get to test them is with our tithes and offerings. You can keep track, you can keep an account, and you will see that God is true to his word. This is January 2021. If you this year want to say, okay, let's Let's put God to the test. This isn't a one-time thing. This isn't a heavenly slot machine. This is a lifestyle where you say, I want to be generous. I want to live life God's way. 
I want to tithe 10%. I want to give offerings over and above the tithe. I want to do that cheerfully, not begrudgingly, not from an obligation, but with anticipation of what God is going to do and how he's going to honor his word. Imagine living life knowing that God has your back financially. It's a wonderful feeling. When you know that you've done it God's way, he will honor his word. He will come through for you. If you'd like to start that, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is it? $20 a month, 65 cents a day. We have other club levels, 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. We also have 2,500 Club, which is 2,500 a year. Founder, $5,000 or more, and then Chairman Circle, $10,000 or more a year. At whatever level God is speaking to you to give, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. You can also go to CBN.com when you give monthly on the Internet. You sign up for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank is doing all the work, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call. Give monthly on the Internet at CBN.com. We have something new for you where you can text to give. You can text CBN, those letters, to 71777, and a monthly giving form will come up on your phone. Either way, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Like a bomb went through the whole city. That's how Trudy Falk described the devastation left by two hurricanes in less than two months. It also looked like a bomb went off inside Trudy's home. Debris was everywhere. She's a single senior. So how did she dig out from under the rubble? Take a look. Within just a month and a half of each other, two hurricanes hit Lake Charles, Louisiana. Looked like a bomb went through the whole city and surrounding areas. Trudy Falk's home was left in ruins. Collapsed ceilings buried everything she owned. It's just kind of heartbreaking to think that I invested so much and then it's going to waste. Insurance will cover the damage to her house, but Trudy couldn't find anyone to help her salvage what she could. Contractors' schedules were full, her siblings are older and have health issues, and her neighbors were busy working on their own homes. Then Operation Blessing came to her aid. You think you're alone in a, in a situation and he just sends somebody, say, hey, we're here to help you. We're gonna help you through this. They've taken out debris, hauled furniture out, did a lot of packing the kitchen. As moldy drywall and debris were removed, precious items were also recovered. It just feels like God giving you a hug and saying, I care. Operation Blessing has just been an awesome help. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. You know, I don't know about you, but I look at that devastation and I think I, I would not know where to begin. You just feel like you've lost everything. Then to have people come in who care about you as a person and who are willing to weed through all of that and find whatever treasures, whatever valuable things can be kept after such a loss, carefully pack them and help you take all the chaos out of your house and start over again. It's, you know what you do, 700 Club members, you bring hope into the midst of devastating circumstances. We just want to say thank you. You're making a difference all around the world every day, whether it's in the midst of a, a tragic happening like that or somebody who has just lost for whatever reason what they're going through, people in poverty who don't have anything to eat, you're there. If you're not a 700 Club member, why don't you join with the rest of us? When you see these stories, surely you can see what an opportunity you have to make a difference. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. So go to your phone and join today. Our number's toll free. It couldn't be easier. It's 1-800-700-7000. Those of you who are 700 Club members, can I show you the club levels we have? 
700 Club Gold, that's the next level up from a general membership. It's $40 a month, or you could go up to the 1,000 Club level at $84 a month. And then we have 2,500 Club members who join us at $209 a month, or you could become a founder. That's $417 a month that works out to $5,000 a year. We want to say thank you in advance. You're making such a difference when you do this. And when you do, we want to say thank you for caring about others by sending you Pat's latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God. It's remarkable. It is a tremendous account of recount, if you will, of God's faithfulness to Pat over the years of those places where God met him right at a point of need, and it'll build your faith as well. And here's an extra. When you join the 700 Club, you also receive instant access to the audio version of I Have Walked with the Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. You can listen at home or on the go on your computer, your phone, your smartphone, or your favorite device by using the CBN Family app. Activate your streaming link when you join as a 700 Club partner today. Again, I just want to say that number is 1-800-700-7000. You know, when you call, you'll know right away you're in the business of making a difference in the lives of people in need. So join us. Gordon? Like most children, Lena had lots of questions, especially about God. No one in her Buddhist family had any answers. So how did Lena learn about God? When a COVID-19 hit her village, who helped Lena and her family? She'll tell you herself. Just watch. Ten-year-old Lena and her brother are being raised by their grandmother. Lena's mom works far from home to support them. Until recently, they were all practicing Buddhists. I worship the idols with my grandma. I burn incense and pray to my ancestor who died. But even as she took part in the ceremonies, Lena had questions. I always wondered if God is real, why can't I see him? Where does he live? One day before the COVID-19 pandemic, Lena and her brother were invited to watch CBN's Superbook. The story that really caught my heart was the story about Moses. With help from God, he separated the sea into two parts. It was an amazing story. So I started to believe that God is good and helps people when they ask. After watching the story, Lena prayed with a teacher to become a Christian. Every morning I pray for my brother and our friends to receive the good news about Jesus. As the COVID pandemic worsened in Cambodia, the economic downturn made it hard for Lena's grandma to provide food for the grandkids. So Lena prayed and asked Jesus to help them. That's when orphans promised come with food packs and rice for us. Now I know for sure that God heard my prayer. This is Lena's grandmother, Ri. Thank God that you helped my grandchildren. Now, because of Lena, I believe in Jesus too. Thanks to you, God used Superbook to bring the good news to us. <laughs> That thank you goes to you if you're a member of the 700 Club. You're part of that story. You're part of providing answers for that little girl. You're part of providing help to her whole, whole family. You're a part of all of it. And you're a part of everything that CBN does. If you want to join, call us now, 1-800-700-7000. If you're already a member, consider increasing this year. Consider going to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, that's $84 a month, and that adds up to $1,000 a year. Either way, do it through Pledge Express, electronic monthly giving, the bank doing all the work, and we can send you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like that, ask for Pledge Express when you call, 1-800-700-7000, or you can go to CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where you give monthly, and you'll automatically sign up for Pledge Express, or you can text. Text the letter CBN to 71777. When you do become a CBN partner, we'd like to thank you by sending you my father's latest book. It's called I Have Walked with a Living God, and it's already getting great reviews. Take a look. Hear what people are saying about Pat Robertson's latest book. 
It is phenomenal. It's as good as any book I've ever read in my entire life. Discover the principles that guided Pat's life. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Pat. Cannot praise Pat enough for the book. Call now, 1-800-700-7000, or go to CBN.com. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. I've written a book called I Have Walked with the Living God. In its pages, I've shared many of the things God has spoken to me. At one time, the Lord told me, and I quote, do not fear the future, for I am the future. I can tell you that when you step out into the future, you step out into the hands of a loving God, whom you can trust not only for tomorrow, but forever. In Pat's dynamic latest book, You'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment. How to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I think this book can help you live that kind of a life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your copy today. Coming up. He had a list of priorities, and I was at the absolute bottom. Recipe for disaster. I hate to say it, but I loved my work more. A lonely wife turns to another man. I knew it was wrong. To get her husband's attention. That was when my world just shattered. Welcome to Washington for the CBN Newsbreak. Twitter has permanently banned MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell. The social media company says it pulled the plug on his account for repeated violations of Twitter's civic integrity policy. It was not immediately clear which posts triggered the suspension. Lindell has been a vocal backer of former President Trump and has insisted the presidential election was rigged. The ban is the latest in a series of disciplinary actions taken by Twitter that include banning President Trump. Well, federal and local authorities are investigating an explosion and vandalism Saturday at a Los Angeles County church that has been a target for its objection to same-sex marriage. A bomb was reportedly thrown at First Works Baptist Church in El Monte. Police said the attack involved the use of an improvised or homemade explosive device. The motive is unclear. The church's pastor has come under fire for sermons that have been deemed by the left as hate speech. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. We don't know what the future holds for different tech companies, but we always want to be able to share the good news through the media. So I want to invite you to watch our program on CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app. This way you can have direct access to the 700 Club and other specials from CBN, and you won't miss a thing. Now just click below to get more details and watch with us. Rick Bowman had a mistress, and his wife Tiffany was intensely jealous. It wasn't another woman, it was Rick's work, and his devotion to it drove Tiffany straight into the arms of another man. I knew that our marriage was bad. Whenever Tiffany would bring up that our marriage is not right, it's horrible. He would say, you're just overreacting. And I just chalked it up to her being dramatic. For 17 years, Tiffany Bowman pleaded with her ambitious husband, Rick, to help around the house, spend time with their four kids and with her. Nothing changed, and the couple fought all the time. I felt completely unimportant, like he had a list of priorities and I was at the absolute bottom. Rick says that's because he had a mistress, his work. Whether it was managing a sales team or serving as a part-time youth pastor, he spent long hours away from home. I hate to say it, but I love my kids and I love my wife. 
but I loved my work more. There was a level of fulfillment and adoration I received from the success of my job. I hated his computer and I hated his cell phone. If the phone rang or a text went off, it didn't matter if we were talking, he just stopped and picked up his phone. In 2009, Rick reached his lifetime goal when he became a senior pastor at a church in Bellingham, Washington. That took even more of Rick's time from his family. Being a pastor is 24 seven. I mean, you have to allow room for that and time for that. And so I would justify it. I just gave up. I just thought that it was always going to be terrible, that I was always going to be lonely, that I was always going to do everything. Meanwhile, a friend of theirs, a married man, stepped in to fill the gap. He would take the boys out and play catch with them in the yard. He would take them out for ice cream. He would mow the lawn. So the fact that he was doing all that stuff, I just felt like, he, he cares about me. Before Tiffany knew it, they were having an affair. I knew it was wrong, but I was so unhappy. Because he lived two hours away, they only saw each other on occasion. Still, they talked and texted often. The affair tormented Tiffany. Making it worse, she was a worship leader at church. I was living such a double life that at night, I would have a glass of wine. One glass turned into two glasses and turned into three glasses, and I was completely numbing out in the evening. I was in such disbelief at, at what I was doing, and yet I didn't stop. The on-again, off-again affair lasted three years until finally, overwhelmed by guilt, Tiffany texted the man that it was over. Soon after, Rick got a phone call. It was the man's wife and Tiffany's best friend who had seen Tiffany's text. That was when my world just shattered. I had never felt such betrayal. I just looked at her and I was like, what are you thinking? But I remember she looked at me and she said, well, now maybe you'll pay attention to me more. That night, Rick left to stay at a friend's house. Neither he nor Tiffany could see a way out. I just said, this is so big. I don't even think God can fix this. I didn't think that Rick would forgive me. I didn't, I, everything was just, my head was spinning. You know, what are we gonna do? How, is he gonna leave me? Is he gonna take the kids? How could God forgive me for doing this? Like the most horrible thing. How could he forgive me? If you can fix this, Lord, please, please help us. Please forgive me, please help. And that was all I could say that night. Praying into the night, Rick realized the part he had played in their broken marriage. I betrayed my wife just in a different way. My affair was with my work. He says God also told him he could fix their marriage on one condition. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, I can when I have willing hearts. Later the next day, Rick went home and he told me that he loved me. And he told me that he forgave me. I couldn't comprehend why he would forgive me or why he would still love me. While it took a lot of time, counseling, and tears for the couple to work out their differences, it was forgiveness through God's love that ultimately healed their hearts and their marriage. When the Lord said, you provide the heart, I'll provide the miracle, he wasn't just talking about the restoration of my marriage. He was also talking about the renewing of my mind, the renewing of my heart. Our encouragement to everybody is that, A, there is hope. There is absolute hope, uh, especially when you have two people with willing hearts to just say, Lord, make this happen, I'll do whatever. 
I know how present and how miraculous and just what a good God he is, that he would come in and that he would save my family, that he would save my marriage. Boy, on that special day that we look so forward to and we plan so much for and we say the words I do, we are clueless about how difficult marriage is, aren't we? Because we are sinners in need of a savior. And, you know, love, love is an emotion that some days is strong and some days isn't there. But there's the vow that we take before God, the vow that we take for each other. And that vow is meant to hold us in the good times and in the bad. You know, nowadays, a lot of people kind of make up their own vows. And I like the old fashioned ones because they kind of cover it all. You know, I, I think it's, you know, through the good, through the bad, through the rich, through the poor, until death do we part. God has a plan for marriage and his plan is so rich and so good. But when things get difficult, you know, you don't get to the place that Rick and Tiffany were fast. You get there a little bit at a time, an inch at a time. And then suddenly, suddenly you start looking for ways that you can solve your own problem. It's our humanity. You know, what is, what is it that the hymn says, Lord, I'm prone to wander prone to leave the God I love. You know, it's in us to do that. Why don't we run to God first? He's the answer. He's the one who can fix it. And in the end, when we finally, finally come to the place of reasoning with him and of surrender to him and recognizing who he is, he will fix it. But that journey in between is so painful. God has a plan for us. And his plan is always for good, always for good. So the question is, are, are we willing to come to him first <laughs> as the very first best choice to fix whatever's out of order in our lives? You know, it might, it might be in your marriage that it's also your job. It might be that, that you're not getting the attention that you feel you want and deserve. It might be that you all have anger management issues. I don't know. We all have things that we struggle with in our relationships. It doesn't matter what the issue is. The answer is God, because he put us together in this regard, men and women to love each other, to stand with, with each other. And he gave us two commands in that, that women were to respect their husbands and men were to love their wives as Christ loved the church. In both instances, it's a laying down of our own lives to elevate the other person, to elevate the relationship to surrender to Christ so he can do the work in us that's needed for us to be able to be who we're meant to be. So if you're struggling in your relationship today, don't make excuses for yourself. Don't find reasons why the other person is at fault. Just say, God, fix me. Fix me right where I am. Show me the things that I need to get rid of. Show me the thinking that needs to change. And the places that are empty, fill those places in me because even your spouse can't fill those places for you. It's a place reserved for God and God alone. If you need prayer today, there's always a friend standing by at CBN on the phones to pray with you. Our number's toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. Listen, we've got a great little booklet. We've called out all the things the Word of God has to say about marriage, about love and relationships. It's yours for free. It's called Love and Marriage. When you call, just say, I'd like the pamphlet. But well, we leave you with these words from 1 Peter. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. God bless you. Tomorrow, is Christianity being silenced? The hammer is going to come down on conservatives and traditional Christians. Big tech is beginning a crackdown. This has been a dry run, if you will, for, uh, for greater control. And cancel culture roams free. Maybe it will affect your employment. What is the next step for the church? We have to get our networks in place to prepare for persecution. Tomorrow on The 700 Club.
These challenging times call for strength and faith. You're going to be just fine, just fine. You need the wisdom to manage new responsibilities. Great job. And Callie, please write a sentence. And the courage and favor to fulfill hey, life's demands. Let's, let's go. Get the insight and power you need to triumph from Pat Robertson's new book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Pat shares his miraculous journey that will inspire you and grow your faith. You can take one thing away from this book. It is this, get rid of the clutter in your life. Instead, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. Learn how to overcome adversity and live in God's blessing. Get I Have Walked with the Living God today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner. Call now.